What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today we are here with Thomas again, and you guys see that right here in the background? That's the cross track. So we've done a couple videos on this. Make sure to subscribe below. I know about, uh, well, basically like a quarter of you guys are actually subscribed. So hit that little button down there. Also hit that bell so you get notifications. Basically you won't see new videos on this car unless you hit that bell. So let's go over what we're gonna be doing today. I will go to Thomas here. Today we got the uh, some Under Armour for the car. We got Primitive Racing the engine skid plate and the transmission skid plate. So we're gonna throw those up. I've been trying really hard to not off-road the car a lot so there's not a bunch of cake mud up underneath there because I knew I wanted to do this. So at least we'll get under there. It'll be fairly clean. We're gonna have chunks of dirt falling into our face for this. So after this, a lot more off-roading. For you guys that don't know, what do we have on here? We got the Anderson fabrication. ADF one and a half inch lift. We got the Method 502s, the BFG KO2s. Pretty much it for suspension wheels and tires. We had the rock blocks mud flaps. We did a video for that. And then obviously the light bar is off because you're saving how many MPG? It's like six to eight miles per gallon. Yeah. Like it's not worth it for a daily driver. I mean, yes, they look cool. They're fun. They are usable and practical, but when you need them, not for a daily driver. And I know I've been getting a lot of questions about people asking these tires and the lift. Do you think that they affected the gas mileage vastly or what do you think changed? It, I'm sure it did lower it but I personally can't say because I mean we did the lift and wheels and tires with like 350 miles on the car I didn't even go through a first tank of gas right. so this is all I've ever known so to me it's not that big of a deal I'm sure it'll take a couple points away from MPG but preference I I think it's worth it what so. do you think you're getting right now um, I'm averaging close to 23 to 25 okay that's, um, that's pretty good combined highway and city and then power levels I know a lot of people are saying you lifted the car, it's already slow. Is it horrible? I wouldn't say it's fast by any means, but how do you feel about it? Yeah, it's not fast by any means. It has just enough oomph to pull onto the freeway to get up to freeway speed safely. Um, I didn't buy this thing to be carving canyons and stuff like that. I, right. I have you an STI if I want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a perfect daily. It's smooth. It handles pretty decent. It stops well. Um, yeah. It accelerates I can okay. I can attest to the stopping earlier on the way to lunch. It uh, it does stop well. Yeah. Even with those extra, you know, with the extra rotating um, mass. Yeah, rotational mass. It still stops, so that's good. Got a little over seven thousand miles on it. I bought it September. It's now February, so no complaints. Sick. All right, let's uh, let's see these bad boys. Get primitive. Get primitive. <laughs> Get primitive, guys. Let's do it. And this looks like it's uh, aluminium. Oh, from yeah. what I can see. It's pretty thick. What size is this? I want to say it was 3 8. Yeah, it looks like 3 8 to me. I haven't read any specs on this. This is the first time I've seen it. But as you guys can see, I think it looks pretty damn nice. Yeah. We think it's 3 8 bent aluminium for all you uh, Europeans out there. And then look at this. We got a little bit of some fins here, which is uh, good for getting out some of that heat for the oil pan area and stuff. You can see it has some uh, pre-drilled bolt holes, which we'll be figuring out where those all go soon enough. And then it also has some standoffs here. So I'm just gonna assume we're gonna be using bolts in all these areas that the standoffs are in. One more goodie. So that's obviously the engine under tray, right? Yeah, and this is the transmission. That's the tranny. Very nice. And this one, I, I would say like, as far as, you know, setup goes, this one looks a lot more involved as far as manufacturing. I also yeah. got like some Dynamat stuff here, so that's either for sound deadening. Overall, that looks pretty, yeah, quality pretty looks nice. Awesome. Yeah, it looks amazing. Aluminum, so it's lightweight. Also, another good thing about aluminum is it uh, really likes to hold its shape. So once it's bent into its uh, place, it does not bend as easy as say steel wood or something like that. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a softer, metal as well so you know if you hit a rock on this or something you're not going to get hung up as easy as you would on say like a steel plate or something some instruction in the box some hardware boom i think we're good to go we got tom over here official you know that high school shop class sick saturated in years of oil and oh, yeah. tears and blood and hopes and dreams yep that just makes you uh <laughs> better at what you're doing 
Yeah, of course. We're gonna get down underneath there and uh, see what we gotta do. So what we're gonna be doing is uh, taking off this bottom panel right here. This tool works really well. You can use a flathead screwdriver, but basically you're just gonna be taking out that middle piece. Once that is off, you'll be able to pull the whole clip out itself. So it actually comes out fairly easily after you get to this part. Well, I should say that before it's not coming out. Before struggling on camera. Come on, come on clip. Oh, see how easy that was? So <laughs> anyways, yeah. You take these little clips out, there's a bunch of them. Like 30,000 of them. Yeah, 30,000 or so. Along the front of the car, you'll see another one right there. Another one right there. So we're gonna take those all out right now. All right, then up in the fender well area, you got, well, this one right here, right before the front tire. So we got the tire right here. And then we're gonna have a few in the fender well area. Those are gonna be the smaller clips. You guys see it right up there. Kind of pointing to it right about there. If you guys don't have one of these Chinga tools, I'll uh, I'll link that down below in the description here. So worth it. So worth it. This thing. Oh, look at that. You guys play with that screwdriver. You need this. Makes your life easy. Simple. Okay. And that's gonna get that whole little. There is one more in the fender well area. You guys see it right here. I, I can't see because I'm behind the camera, guys. But uh, Thomas is gonna get it because. He has two hands, two opposable thumbs. See how much easier that was? <laughs> two thumbs. Now we got a couple bolts in the middle here. Those are gonna be some 12 millimeters. If you guys have ever changed the oil on a Subaru, which if you own the car, it's not super hard, but uh, there are a few bolts back here, so we'll have to get those. Now that those are out, we got two more in the front. There's two more clips in the rear. Look at that clean exhaust, guys. That's some pretty stuff right there. We'd be liking that. It looks real good. Did you just look at it? Did you just look at it? Just look at it. Pretty much got that off. If you guys have not seen underneath the Subaru Crosstrek, this has a uh, bit of a different design than your turbocharged engine because there's obviously no turbo, so there's no up pipe, like you guys are probably used to seeing. As far as warmness goes, this is actually pretty cool, which is great because we were just driving the thing. Uh, still has a steel oil pan, which is great. And while a lot of newer cars are coming out with a lot of plastics for uh, certain things like this. So as far as bashability, I'd say this thing's pretty dang good. You're gonna hit your exhaust before you're going to hit your uh, oil pan. And now with the skid plate, it is going to make you hit the skid plate before hitting any of these major engine components. So that will be great. Hit your exhaust through the skid plate, you've got bigger issues. Yeah, you probably uh, probably got like a rock right around, right about there. We are opening up the packaging right now. We're trying to see what the heck we got inside here. We got some stickers, which are always important. If the company doesn't send you stickers, then you should pretty much send the product back because you legit. know it's crap. Yeah. yeah, if they don't send stickers, then they don't, they don't care about their stuff. But obviously these guys do, so that's good. We got instructions, which we actually are going to read because we don't want to do this twice, or at least I don't. And it looks like for the front skid plate, it did come with a bit of hardware. So we're gonna show you guys where this all goes. We'd read the instructions to you, but that's not funny. Dude, we're already there though. We already that. did A, removed oh. the plastic stock one. We're pff, solid. We're halfway there, see? So that's gonna go with the front. So we're gonna start on this guy right now. Apparently you use reuse 12, or you reuse what? 10, 10 of, of the, the 12. 12 volts. So in these little, these things called holes right here, you actually put bolts put bolts in those because we're removing and you remove these so we'll cut to the scene these guys right here you can see this whole little bracket that is actually going to be replaced by this new mid mount to uh, cover up the tranny that way we don't shove any rocks or any nice uh, crap into there if we hear something solid pretty much all we're going to be ripping off is the exhaust so that's good because you know you just go uh, get an aftermarket exhaust i will say as far as the exhaust goes on this car uh, it definitely could be tucked up tighter. So if any off-road company wants to make a tucked exhaust, if they did an ovalized exhaust, that would be sick. Yeah. That'd be really nice to get a little bit of extra clearance. So if you guys are watching, you're an off-road company, do that. Um, yeah, get some of that, uh, I think it's vibrant performance uh, ovalized exhaust. That'd be freaking sick. 14 millimeters right here. We're gonna try it with the impact driver, see how it goes. All right guys, we pulled out the Harbor Freight Special because these are actually torqued on fairly tight. 
much better. I'm probably going to be upgrading the uh, the wall goodies to maybe some uh, different stuff soon, so we'll see. All right, there's the first plate, so we got the first six bolts off of this thing. The next six over here. All right, so we got that plate off. Now it's on to this guy. Pretty lightweight, I would say 10 to 12 pounds. If that matters to you guys, I don't think it does because you're off-roading. Hey Thomas, did you recently see that a uh, Thunder Hill Raceway is going to have a rally cross track? I think I did. Yeah. I think I did hear that. We should take that out. We should take this out here. <laughs> Run over all the things. All of it. All right, so I'd recommend getting a few started, just one on each side. And then what you're going to want to do is just, uh, you know, torque them down after you're done with that. But definitely don't torque any of the bolts until you get it all lined up. That way you can get it nice and even. They did do some ovalization of some of the holes on here to make it better for alignment. So that is great. You can see too, those front bolts are actually just kind of notched. So just a little bit of the flange of the bolt actually um, actually hits on it. So that's kind of cool. Very high quality built. And now won't be scared to uh, smash on some stuff. I mean, I know this thing already has really good ground clearance because it does have that full independent suspension. So your uh, your clearance on this car is really, really good. But now this just gives you that extra sense of, I don't give a shit. So that's always good. Now maybe you'll need like a diff one, huh? Do they make that? Yeah, they do. And uh, I'm pretty sure I have like two or three of them at home just from uh, the WRX over the years. Oh yeah, it's just a little flat. Yep, Plate little box. In the middle. Yeah, a little box that goes over. That'd be good. See you guys right now, this is where that do not torque it down thing comes into play. So we're gonna have to play a little bit with alignment and it looks like Thomas is getting it. But you know, if you torque these down too quickly, you may have issues lining it up. So just, just do it all loose. Finger tight. Finger tight. Get a finger tight and then torque it down to, what was it, like 25 20, to 35 22 pounds? to 33 or something like that. Something like that. You know, good and tight and uh, don't strip it out. All right, so we're using a BFH. Trying to get the alignment just a tad better and using a BFH. Did it work? Yep. Sweet. Perfect. So because we left it loose, we just banged on that thing with a nice mallet real quick. Able to get it all lined up. So overall, this transmission cross brace or skid plate, I should say, is a uh, very easy install. Super easy. 10 yeah. bolts. Yeah. 12 bolts to take it off. Even easier to put back on, I guess, really. Yeah, 22 to 33 foot pounds. All right, guys, so that buttons up the rear of that. As you guys can see right there, it looks really good. So that buttons up the rear, super easy to do. And we're gonna save ourselves on issues down the line. So right here, these are the bolts for the front skid plate. So. These are actually gonna go into the radiator support. This has a welded on nut here. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that down into the radiator support with this washer in between. That goes to 18 foot pounds. So don't go too tight. These do not need to be over tightened. And what that's gonna do is actually slip through this area right here. So you can kind of see the setup. That is gonna allow enough droop out to let this bolt come through on that side. And then we're gonna put a washer and a nut on there and tighten it down. Now you do not need to over tighten these. They state that a couple times. 18 so foot pounds. 18 foot pounds, which is not a lot. See this little plastic little guy right here. We're gonna have to rip that off real quick. We can use some pliers, a chingadera possibly. Chingadera. Yeah. Get up in there and do some things. Hit Yahtzee. Thomas, you know, hit Thomas in the face with it, whatever we want to do. Uno mas. Trying to use that uh, that man strength right now. That seemed to work. That's where the jumpsuit comes in handy. I think it was more so the beard. That too. Yeah, yeah. the beard definitely helps. Spacer bolts. Spacer bolts, super easy. Just gonna hand thread that in, and then use the top portion of it to torque it down to 18 foot pounds of torque. How's your uh, your hand feel to 18 foot pounds? Does that feel about good? That's probably like 16. Maybe 17? That's uh, probably like 17. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I heard it in your voice. That sounded yeah, about like 18. Just, just a little stress right there. Good yeah, deal. yeah. All right. Okay, then you guys see the stock cross member right here. So this is the, uh, and you actually have some welded on nuts at the top right here. This is where you tuck off the stock shield underneath the car. Now the bolts are actually gonna bolt up into that. So now you can see these front little two. We're just kind of kind of line those up. Line this up here. Got the bolt through pretty easy. 
All right, guys, so you can see that took about, I don't know, I would actually say that the, besides the weight, this is almost easier than doing the stock one. Oh yeah, totally. So if you guys have ever done an oil change on an old school Subaru, I'm not saying this one, well, actually no, this one, because you this still gotta get to the drain plug. Clips, yeah. yeah, so pretty damn easy. We're gonna torque these bolts down and uh, who wants to see it go off road? All right, guys, so I got the Scout down here, down with, uh, with Thomas in the cross track so we made it out here we're just kind of in a little a little dusty little spot down by the train yard or whatever by the railroad tracks should be a cool little spot to uh test this thing out and uh have a little bit of fun and i brought this because well it's a little bit of fun out here too <laughs> Boom. All right, so flexed out a little bit on this thing right here. You guys can kind of see. See if we got some wheel in the air. Oh yeah. That's that uh, independent suspension stuff right there. So uh, we're out here just kind of cruising, just getting some uh, three well action going on. Got the scout over there, just having some fun. Um, overall, this thing's pretty cool. It smashes around pretty damn good. I mean, we got a hole like, I don't know, eight, nine inches, something like that underneath there so yeah pretty cool you know full hat full hat clearance those look nice very nice all nice and fresh up under there Ooh. oh it stuffed it it's stuffing some bumper I'm gonna try to use that skid plate all right, so we need a uh, we need a limited slip diff. That's what I'm seeing right here. Woo! Ah, I think we're good. <laughs> what is the break? What is fucking bumper? <laughs> we got Thomas's cross trek in the air. Doing a little bit of off-roading stuff, uh, just kind of messing around, having fun. Had some fun with my scout, so that's cool. Um, yeah, overall, install is really easy. Yeah. It's gonna save you from like bottoming out. We kind of tried using the skid plate, uh, plate. We don't have enough approach angle, so that's just due to the bumpers. So we got a little bit of a- uh, And trying to go off a BMX jump. Yeah, a little bit of smashage, but that's all right. You know, that's what you get, so. Should've buff out. Anything else coming up soon? Uh, there might be onboard air coming up soon. Mm. Like it might be in the mail right now. Awesome. So if you guys want to check that out, I don't know if Thomas is going to do that before we can make a video on it, but uh, if not and he gets it installed, we'll go over it and uh, show it all. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that bell, subscribe. We'll talk to you guys soon. Later. Wrench on. Plastic carnage right there.